thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, these are debates are very worth having, uh, well worth having. Uh, in 2017, we did in fact cut taxes. We cut taxes uh, in a way to make American corporations competitive with a worldwide rate. What happened before COVID? Uh, you saw a rise in wealth uh, among every segment of the American uh, uh, family. A Latino and Hispanic household incomes uh, increased. African American incomes increased. Women's income increased. We added five million jobs. Uh, people benefited mightily. Uh, what happened after that is that 19%, the top 1% account, I think, for 19% of all wealth in the country, they pay 40-something percent of income taxes. 35% of the people in the United States don't pay any income taxes. And so I think a model of increasing taxes now in the name of going after the wealthy hurts the middle class as much as it would hurt anybody else. The one thing that I differ with Senator Sanders is that we live in a world that's very competitive. If you go to a 35% corporate tax rate, you're going to incentivize people uh, in the wrong way to find locations that are more friendly. Why are we doing so well in South Carolina? Because we have a low business-friendly tax structure, hard-working people with a good education system to help them uh, acquire the skills they need to work in a modern economy. That's why BMW, Michelin, and Boeing, I could go on and on and on. The premier manufacturers in the world have chosen my state because of a good workforce and good sound tax policy. To those who are listening out there, tax policy is job policy. The way you structure your tax code is going to determine how competitive you can be vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world. And if you want to declare war on the top income earners in this uh, country because you think they have too much because they don't pay their fair share. Well, what is a fair share? Uh, Reader's Digest has been doing polling on this issue for decades. And most people say around 25 or 30 percent is a fair share of anybody to pay. What Senator Sanders doesn't get, in my view, is most people who are struggling to make it out there would like to be wealthy and don't resent people who are wealthy who've done it right and fairly. So when the government's going to determine how much you can make, what the ratio should be of what a CEO can make in any company, what else are we going to do? So the bottom line is that free enterprise works. The model you're proposing has been, propo has been followed throughout the world, and it crashes and burns over time. I'm not uh, advocating eliminating the death tax, but I am advocating making it possible for people who worked all their lives to pass wealth to their families. And when Bill Gates' times comes, uh, I think he's done a, a good job with his money. I don't want the government to grab all of it at the end. This insatiable desire by my friends on the left to grab as much money and power as they can is going to ruin the country. There has to be some balance that I do believe in a progressive tax code, but every time we meet, we're talking about another group of people in America to grab their money to do things with that politicians like uh, on the left. And we'll see where this goes. We're gonna have a election in 2022 and I want everybody in South Carolina to know that if Senator Sanders gets his way, it's going to be hard for corporations to remain competitive in our country. The reason people are leaving New York and California in droves to come to where I live is they're making it impossible to do business there. And we're not going to do that to the country with the Republican votes. I think our tax cuts in 2017 were well designed. They benefited everybody in the country, and we will fight you. Uh, appropriately and respectfully as you try to rearrange America in a fashion that I think is contrary to what we stand for as a country. A debate worth having and a fight worth engaging in. Thank you.